Hi, this is Steve. Uh, today I want to show you the new version of the pin to dmd editor, um, version 2, that introduces some new concepts and also some new ways to do the colorization uh, for a playback on a virtual or a real pinball. So first of all, uh, um, there's a separation now between what was formerly animations only and now it's called recordings or scenes. Recordings are essentially um, recordings that you come from the outside either by importing an animation based on um, picture sequences or recording from um, virtual pinball machine, pinball emulation um, and these are not changeable or immutable and scenes are uh, what you actually do with the editor replacing scenes by completely adding completely new frames or adding color to existing um, to existing frames uh, this is called a scene and uh, is uh, based on part of the, what you do with the editor so when we now uh, first load a recording in this case it's one of a Doctor Who uh, pinball machine we have the recording over here and you can look at um, what is um, shown in the recording um, this little lock in front of the recording also shows uh, that this is a recording and therefore not uh, changeable what you can change is the name, of course. If you have many recordings, you can give them meaningful names, but now we have only one, so this is not uh, an interest. Um, the easiest thing you could do with the, in, in order to, to colorize your um, playback is simply um, choosing um, a new color palette. There's a couple of color palettes defined over here. Um, um, the predefined are only uh, shades of the different colors, so red, green, blue, and so forth. So you can either uh, create a project file for pin to DMD that simply chooses a different default palette. Let's say you uh, prefer uh, a blue uh, display, or what you can also do is changing the color dynamically, the palette kind of dynamically. This is what I will show you next. So, in order to change a palette, uh, you need to find a frame um, in the recording that actually triggers the switching. Let's say you want to uh, switch the palette uh, when this Doctor Who logo first appears. So we go to the recording where the Doctor Who logo uh, shows up. So, let's do this here. So now it comes um, into the foreground and let's say we switch exactly when it is on the foreground uh, then you need to define which palette you would like to see for instance the purple one and then uh, clicking add palette switch and there is um, the, the possibility um, to choose uh, the plane the actual plane that is triggering the palette switch uh, depending on what is shown here in the plane preview so it could be that the plane preview is only relevant information for one plane uh, because the other one is maybe just black and so you can switch over here which which plane actually um, triggers the palette switch so in this example it's, uh, it's, it does not matter which plane we choose because both planes have enough information that uh, can be used to trigger the palette switch. So then I add a palette switch over here which gives us this uh, one keyframe that is then used um, to switch the palette. And we can now either leave the keyframe alone so the palette will be active forever or if something else happens while uh, the playback is going on or we can choose um, to have only a, um, a certain duration uh, the pink palette active. To get the feeling how long the, the, the palette should be active you can um, 
choose the palette and then play a little bit um, forward with the animation and for instance if you like to have the the palette only active until the logo disappears you go to the position where the logo disappears and click fetch duration and now you see this is exactly uh, one and a half second after you initially switched to the palette and then uh, this defines how long uh, the new palette will be active. So this is one of the simplest things you can do, colorization your, your pinball. And of course you can uh, define um, different palettes than just the predefined ones. I would, this is what I will show you next. So first I want to save um, the, the project file. Let's say it's a list of uh, the recordings and the palettes and the scenes if we have created one, um, which we haven't until now. And you can now choose to have um, a new palette if you like. So new palettes is easy, just clicking new, which gives you a new palette. You can also uh, create a custom name for the palette. Uh, and then um, choose uh, different colors for, um, let's say, the logo sequence or another sequence that is part of the recording. Uh, defining colors or, or changing colors for a palette is done by a color chooser. So it's control and click, or in the case of the US, uh, USX or Mac, it's command click on the um, palette tool over here and then you can choose a color um, by yeah, let's say we use another uh, color like a green one or the blue one and you see that uh, the preview display is um, updated instantly uh, when you're choosing the color here and so you can choose the color and have a new color here in the palette this works in general and if you like to have uh, an adjustment that the keyframe we defined uh, before and should now uh, switch to the newly created um, palette, you have to have an additional click on apply. So now the keyframe will switch to this new palette. Um, sometimes it could happen that the screen uh, where you want to trigger uh, such an action like a palette switch is somehow uh, mixed up uh, with additional content um, that is dynamically introduced, like, for instance, um, the number of credits you actually have. So in this case, uh, we have um, a number of two, but uh, this number is obviously uh, changing uh, depending on how many credits are left. So if you want to have... Um, a triggering on such a frame that has this dynamic content you can either choose to use the right plane maybe the number two is only part of the plane uh, zero we can try this by switching to plane uh, one but as you can see in the preview window um, uh, the upper part which contains the number is always a part of that plane. So this doesn't help uh, to choose the right plane uh, because the number that is changing is always part of both planes. What you can do here uh, to uh, get around this is using a mask. So and masks are simply um, defining an area that is relevant uh, for creating uh, these hashes. And uh, if you know that uh, in the in the area here over here is a dynamic content, you can mask it out. This is done by um, switching the sh the show mask button on, and now we have um, um, a blue mask over the whole screen, and we can now um, create um, with the drawing tools by setting something to black and drawing. A rectangle, we can now mask out um, 
the area where the dynamic content will appear. So now I draw this kind of a rectangle over here. Um, switching on and off the mask shortly. So you can see um, this area will no longer part of the uh, cal calculation of um, the hash. And it's also then not shown um, in the in the uh, calculation of the hash sum over here. So it, it's not the same um, hash uh, like before. And in order to create um, then a trigger that is capable of uh, matching all frames that has credits and press start. Uh, on it or simply credits in this way when we're choosing the first plane you need to have the mask switch on and then um, again um, use the add, callet, uh, add palette switch uh, button so now we go maybe for uh, the green palette and choose add palette switch and then we have a second keyframe that makes use of uh, the mask we defined actually and if you click on that keyframe, the usage of the mask, in this case mask zero, is also uh, highlighted over here and marked with the M0 in front of the actual hash uh, to show that um, this checksum um, was calculated based on the mask. The mask color is also changing right now uh, to red which uh, is referred to as a locked mask before because we have defined a, a keyframe that is actually using this mask. So we can, uh, using this mask uh, with this area marked a mask out uh, as many times as we like, uh, but um, we could not change this mask anymore because uh, some of the key keyframes, in this case the keyframe 2, uh, are already using this mask or referring to that mask. So um, in order to um, have all keyframes uh, still uh, work, uh, we cannot change the mask anymore. Um, what is still possible is uh, to have uh, different masks for different uh, uh, triggering uh, scenes. So if you like to have something uh, similar with an with an, uh, another, let's say, uh, this type of frame uh, that has also some dynamic content uh, in the lower area here. Uh, you can choose to um, use a different mask, uh, mask number one, which is uh, not used until now. And then again, um, masking out the the um, so masking out.